Do you want your child to speak Spanish fluently but need classes to be affordable and fit your busy schedule? It's time to try True Fluency Kids, the leading online Spanish immersion program for children. Experienced native speaking teachers use live, fun, and engaging lessons to teach the most common words to get your child speaking Spanish with confidence right away. Use code INTUITIVEPOD20 to save 20% off your first course at truefluencykids.com. Welcome to the Intuitive Family Podcast, the show that helps your family live intuitively and thrive, not just survive. I'm your host, Camille Perksey. Join me as I share the stories of families living outside the norm who embrace the power of intuition to make unconventional choices that align with their family values and not those of the Joneses. I can't wait for you to meet today's guest. So without further ado, let's start the show. Welcome to a new episode of the Intuitive Family Podcast. In this episode, you'll meet Whitney, a debt-free single mom of three from Florida who now resides in Maine. In addition to homeschooling one of her children and being self-employed, Whitney built a cash flowed a small home, which she then sold for a bigger mortgage-free home. Whitney's story is a testament to the power of living on your own terms and prioritizing what's truly important to you over everything else. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Whitney from a moonlit forest and eBay to 100K. And if you're a homeschooler and want to hear more about her homeschooling journey, you can get access to a bonus episode where we discuss that and more by joining Homeschool You Academy, my online school for homeschooling parents. Learn more via a link in the show notes. All right. Hey, Whitney, thanks so much for being here on the show. Thanks for having me. So I know a little bit about you because I follow you on Instagram, but I would love for you to tell our audience a little bit about you and your family. Well, I have three kids and they were all born in St. Pete, Florida, um, which quickly became an atmosphere where I didn't want to raise kids. So we moved to Maine. And shortly thereafter, I became single and I built a little house in the woods and heavily focused on just multiple sources of income and trying to get out of that survival mode thing uh, for the kids and me. And recently we sold the little house, bought a big house, and now we're here. And that's pretty much where we are right now. I love your story so much. I've been following you on Instagram for years now. Yeah, because I know I met, we virtually met, I guess, uh, just through homeschooling. But to see your journey has been just dope. And, you know, I tell you that all the time um, because I know, you know, just as a woman and a single mom who really has big dreams, I, I love to see that you go after it unapologetically. So I know that that your story will inspire so many more uh, moms and families in general to do what you're doing because you're doing things on your own terms. And I love seeing women do that, you know, and your kids get to see that too. Yes. So speaking of that, what inspired you to get started with your lifestyle? I know it, it sounds like it's kind of like a necessity. You had to it in, in a way. It, but it really was um, like consumerism and just trying to keep up with the Joneses and all that landed me in a not good position um, in my marriage. And I really had to hunker down and go without for basically two years, which is what a lot of financial gurus will say is like, there's this two year reset, you know, uh, focusing on getting out of debt, um, building an emergency fund, sinking funds and things like that. And really it just, it, it was something I had to do. There was no way to maintain keeping up and reset everything. And that's, it's what it took was just a complete reset to get my head above water. Absolutely. Um, That's a big transition to go from married with kids to not and moving to, I mean, moving in itself is enough, uh, but having to do that and then worrying about money and debt. And and that's some things I want to get into, like, uh, because I know you're big into budgeting and you're doing a lot of what you do like with cash and that is right. so different <laughs> you know with lifestyle um that you're choosing I, I love that um, even if it comes from um a place of necessity it's still right. 
something that is to be proud of because just because you were forced, you know, you feel like you were forced to that place doesn't, doesn't, you didn't allow yourself to stay there. So I love that. Yeah. Um, so I know you're a homeschooler. One of your children homeschools and the other two go to school and you're really into budgeting and thrifting um, and real estate, which is all, most people only do one. <laughs> but you have all these going on. And um, I would love to know, and this is such a loaded question because it's like when people ask, what's a typical day? You know, it's like, well, there probably isn't a typical day, but I would love to get a peek into what would be your typical routine or or how your day goes when you're managing all these things. Well, luckily right now it's summer, so there's that. But I wake up early. Um, I kind of assess, you know, how many orders I have that need to go out. And I head out to my storage barn and start processing orders, Um, get cleaned up, get ready for the day. People are waking up, uh, kind of get everybody settled and doing what they need to be doing um, in time to watch the stock market open at uh, 930. I start watching it around nine and kind of decide if I'm doing anything with that that particular day. And if I am, I stay home and do that. And if not, you know, shortly thereafter, I pack up and head out and go to the thrift stores and go sourcing. So they, so they call it. And then everything's a drive for me here in Maine. So I'm gone a couple hours, photograph, get all my listings cranked out in time to basically do dinner. And then I'm done for the day thereafter. Yeah. Yeah. It's so wild to see the fines that you get because when I go to the thrift store, I am, it's nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, you're just in a place that always has these awesome things. Is there some type of um, like system that you have, or I don't want you to give away your secrets, but you know, like how do you find such good things that actually turn a profit? Well, basically it's learning to recognize what's junk because that's 95% of the battle. So when you can kind of scan through everything, there'll be, you know, things that are left. And if you don't know what they are, look them up. And if you do know what they are and they're good, pick them up. So that's pretty much what I do. Just learning to weed out everything that's just, you know, junk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely a skill set. Because if you don't know what you're looking for, or even I see how people like go to the stores, regular box stores, and they look in on the end cap. And it's like, yeah, it's a good price, but is it worth it? You know, you right. can make money from it. So it's definitely a skill. Um, I love that. And you're like so good at it. <laughs> so I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so I have a question about intuition. Um, I don't know this to be true for you, but I have a real good sense that intuition is a big driver and how you kind of move through your days and through your world. Um, So I would love to know how intuition plays a part in your family's journey and just your everyday life. Right. Well, ever since I decided that I wanted to be a mother, you know, early in my marriage, um, I knew that it was never going to intuitively be okay with me um, personally to have a baby and then have that baby transition into a daycare setting at six weeks. Um, If there's people that that works for, amen, hallelujah. I just, I knew for me as like an attached parent um, with my parenting ambitions that I had as far as like attached parenting, uh, breastfeeding, things like that. I just, I knew that that wasn't going to be conducive with what I wanted. So Um, I knew I needed to start a business. Um, I needed to be able to work out of the home, things like that. So just kind of knowing what I wanted intuitively, I had to shape everything around it. And it it kind of is the same thing as why I just had to buy this house cash is because as long as I want to be home and I want to homeschool and I want to be able to be like, people are sick, I'm not working today. You know, I I don't work for anybody else. As long as I want to dictate how my days go. I intuitively knew I was going to have to do things differently. Um, and that wasn't going to include a 30 year mortgage for me because as a self-employed person, um, it was just going to be too difficult to try to finance a house, you know, um, based on self-employment. So it's really just shaping things 
to have my life the way that I want it to be, um, which is definitely outside the box of like what normal people do. I suppose normal people finance their house, um, but it, it just wasn't something that, you know, I was going to be able to keep my values in line as far as my parenting and homemaking and things like that. And uh, keep doing what I want to do every day if I was going to try to do what everybody else did, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think a lot of people that are like on this journey already or have lived with it a long time feel the same way. Like you just know something inside of you tells you like Mm -hmm. the the typical path that most of us are conditioned to follow doesn't feel right. And you may not know, you know, the specifics of like, how and why but you just know your gut's telling you something something, that's not for me you know like they say like being in debt is normal like and in that sense let me be weird because I don't want to do that and I mean I do you know obviously have payments for certain things but you know no credit cards and no mortgage or any of that so I keep really low overhead so that there is just minute things that I have control over because I am responsible for three little people, you know, and one of them wants to be home and, you know, they want to have me accessible. So it's just what I do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I I totally agree with that. And, um, you know, this podcast is really about highlighting those, those differences Um, because one way is not better than the other. It's just that this is how it works for you and your family right now. Um, and just like you were saying, or maybe I mentioned about, you know, one of your kids is at home and the other two are in school. Like that's very different. You know, most, right. both homeschoolers, everybody's at, at home. And so, right. so I love that you give yourself permission to just move the way it works at this time. Right. Um, and I think a lot of people might be scared of that because there's a lot of unknown when it comes to all these different ideas that you kind of like it sounds great but is it going to work um and I love that you try it and see and and that's what um I think is really inspiring to me Mm -hmm. that yeah I love that um so what's something you wish you would have known when you started all this in the very very beginning of your journey don't accrue debt Mm -hmm. there's that Uh, and I mean get with someone who shares your long-term outlook and a lot of times when you're 20 something you don't always know what it is so I get that but um you know finance being the number one cause of divorce for example and things like that just uh don't normalize doing things that are not healthy financially for yourself um that's one thing that I wish I would have known and student loans no (laughs) Don't get me started on all that. Yeah, I I didn't come to really understand money until probably my late twenties, and by right. then it's kind of um, it's not too late. But you've developed some habits that you have to right. overcome. So yes, I, I totally I totally see why that would be something, especially with the type of lifestyle that you knew was important to you. That just wasn't going to be an option. Mm-hmm. Um, so let me just ask you about that when it comes to budgeting and finance and stocks and, and things like that, which a lot of those things can be so intimidating, especially to women. And when you're a single mom, that's even more like, how am I going to do and learn all that kind of stuff? Um, I kind of get a sense of how it got started, but what drives you in that place? What makes it so important that, you know, you don't have debt and you manage your money well, and I'm sure you pass these values on to your kids. What, what drives that for you? I think, um, I was heavily impacted by like social media. And then there's like a couple of gurus who I started following and I was just like, wow, that's not normal. Or wow, that is easier. Wow. You know, you have to stop thinking that everybody's smarter than you. Mm. You have to pick a couple of people that are doing what you want to be doing and and hone in on what it is that they're doing and decide that you're they're not smarter than you and just start mimicking the habits of successful people. Um, and that I mean that's pretty much what I did. And I think that's just an important thing for women too, is it, like you were saying, for a woman, it seems like trading stock or whatever is maybe not, you know, what women do, but there's a lot of 
really profitable women traders and excellent resellers that I follow who have kids at home, several homeschoolers who resell. So basically finding people doing what you want to do and just hone in on those skills. I, I totally agree with that because it's so easy to, like you said, see all these people doing all these different things and they appear successful, but it's like, is that really going to work for me? And to see, especially if you're someone who is not trying to follow the traditional path, because the traditional path is like an abundance of people doing that. But with the internet, especially social media, we get to see all these little, these different kind of people that are still successful in their own right. Um, and even for me being a, a black mom or a black woman, it's, I don't get to always see myself. So if you're a different kind of thinker or you or you just live in a different way that isn't considered like standard, it's so cool when you find people that that really resonate with you and you can learn. It's isolating though, right? Very much so. It yeah. Really, that's something that I deal with. I don't know if you deal with that, like like you said, as a black woman, as a homeschooler and you know, doing things that are not mainstream um, as far as like schooling or whatever. Um, or for me with like the debt or the homeschool or stuff like that, it, it is isolating. Cause you know, I think people, uh, I don't know, they, they see like how you're doing things differently and how you move differently. And I think sometimes they kind of resent it or sometimes they don't respect it. I don't know. It's just, it's an isolating thing doing things differently. Yeah. I think too, when you're in, and you probably resonate with this, you're just you're different. You're a different type of person, even as a kid, you know, something's a little bit different. You don't go yeah. about it the same way. So I think, you know, when you become an adult, you have the freedom to explore that and to find your people. But right. in the meantime, you know, and sometimes like I did, I felt like I had to be the, the person that it's like, well, this is me. And if anybody else is like me, they'll find me, you know, right. somewhat apologetic about it. But yeah, it can be absolutely isolating. And the type of um worlds you're in so homeschooling that's so still very different it's becoming more common very different mm -hmm. being self-employed as a single mom that's just you know all of the paths that you're on are so different than how people normally um normally see women and see you know families just the type of you know even the diversity in your family it's just it's different and right that's why it's so important to highlight your story and people, people like that, because we need to understand that this is really how the world works. Like right. this is where it looks. Most people are doing their own thing. They're not mm -hmm. following the path. And so I'm, I'm grateful that you're sharing that because people need to see it. Are you a parent searching for an enriching educational experience for your kids that sparks curiosity, encourages innovation, and embraces diversity through STEM and language arts? Discover Hewitt Learning. As a nonprofit, they are dedicated to providing creative and accessible resources, such as the Adventurous MC Detective Agency, the Well Loved Math and Games, and the Engaging Lightning Lit series. But Hewitt Learning goes beyond curriculum. Their National Innovator Challenge inspires kids to tackle real-world problems, fostering critical thinking and global connection. It's not just a competition, it's an empowering journey towards becoming change makers. Redefine learning and prepare your child to engage meaningfully with our diverse world by visiting Hewitt Learning online at hewittlearning.org slash intuitive. That's hewittlearning.org slash intuitive. Um, speaking of challenges, what's the biggest challenge you faced and how did you overcome it? I would have to just go back to just that mountain of debt. It was really hard. And I really, I went without to prioritize not having that be there anymore. Um, that was, you know, really hard, obviously, um, getting divorced. But, you know, the debt definitely has to take the cake. Um, I had paid off, like, I think $20,000, $21,000 in like six months um, at, in the end of last year. I just decided that like the slow and steady little extra payment thing wasn't working. So I, you know, really just snowballed it. So they say and got rid of it, but it was definitely hard, but it like changes your whole lifestyle on the other side. 
because all those minimum payments being freed up, it's just, it's such a huge lifestyle change. Seriously. Um, I know I was introduced to a lot of like the debt payoff and really just understanding how money works, like Susie Orman. So this is like back, back in the day. Yeah. Dave Ramsey was like yeah. the really big wake up call. I mean, I've kind of moved away from him, but like- Every has. <laughs> yeah, you know, for various reasons. But yeah. um, even so with, you know, the, the type of man he is, I guess, his information is good and it's yeah. really solid. And, you know, even if it, if you don't follow it exactly, you know, those seven baby steps really make a lot of sense. They um, do. And even like we were saying, seeing people do it. So like those debt free calls, you know, and seeing people like average people, quote unquote, um, right. get out of debt. That's like you said, when you really add up those minimum payments, that's a lot of money <laughs> that you could just be investing or saving or taking trips or whatever. So I yeah. know that huge deal and I remember seeing you know you, you post like those payments and I'm just like she's on it like it seems so far away but once you hunk her down and decide this is it you know right. you make it happen yeah that's awesome um so let's let's turn around a little bit and talk about success so what does success look like for you and your family success for me has consistently been has consistently meant being the owner of my time. Um, you know, I, I do what I want within. Mm -hmm. And I have to crank out a certain amount of things every day, the majority of days in order to keep it that way, of course. But I'm still, you know, I take off the entire month of November, you know, more or less. Um, I, I do what I want. I, I, that's that's success. Success is being the owner of your own time and not having somebody else dictate, you know, whether or not you're going to be able to stay home with your sick kid that day, uh, things like that. So, I mean, to me, that's success. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems so out of reach when you're not in that mode of, you know, when I remember coming home with when I had my daughter and I had always worked, always worked. And she's the third one. So always worked. And that transition of, okay, now, yeah, I can do what I want, but it's like, that's a whole new world to actually own your time. Like you right. can't, you can't get that with, you know, being a week off of work or two weeks off of work. It, yeah. It, you know, it takes, cause you have to really prioritize what needs to be done. Like you said, you know, you have a certain amount of orders to do a certain amount of things, right? Um, but it's really a mindset shift more than anything. And I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a nine to five, absolutely not. Mm -mm. nine to five in you. They, it's like they're saying being able to survive on a nine to five now is almost obsolete. Like so hard for people that secondary stream of income, focusing on multiple streams of income. I probably have like seven or 10. I, I don't even know right now. Um, but it's a game changer. So it's not about, oh, you know, having a nine to five is going to make my life suck or whatever. Having a nine to five is such a huge launching pad that when you start having other streams of income to supplement, start taking one bill, taking a, an alternative stream of income, grow that stream of income to where it covers that one bill, then take another bill and cover that with dividend income or, you know, different reselling or whatever, eventually there's no dependence on that nine to five and you can keep it or you cannot, you know? So, and, and that's when that time freedom comes into play because look, I'm taking time off from my nine to five and you're not all bent out of shape wondering, is it going to be signed off on? Is it going to be okay? Well, you know, I'm telling you how it's going to be because <laughs> you have that, that power back. So you can do both simultaneously, kind of regain your financial power and have the nine to five. So I think it's important to say that because I don't ever want to shame traditional nine to fivers. I, you know, I totally agree. Um, and I think I wish I would have known that when I had my nine to five or if you're a two income family, really having that mindset to be like, OK, one income is for taking care of the house and everything else is for bills not bills but a uh, debt or whatever you want to do 
right. that's such a game changer when you know that. And for some reason, that's just not like taught. I don't expect to be taught in school <laughs> at all, but in maybe sometimes it is, but like really learning like the multiple streams of income. I mean, that's a whole nother podcast episode to really understand how powerful that is. And it's not as complex as, as it used to be because the internet and passive income and all these types of things. Um, yeah, we can, we can dig into that. <laughs> and to be able to have a secondary income. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it really, you know, if you, if you can't, you know, if it's not like a mental health issue with your job and you can just go in there and do what you need to do, like you said, that is your, that is your security to a certain extent. Right. And mm-hmm. then this extra is just like icing on the cake and you can really right. start transitioning however you want to, even if you never leave your mind five. Yeah. I think, right. I think we're mentioning that because I don't want it to seem like the only way is to be a stay at home mom who doesn't, you know, have a, have a job or has her own job. Um, because you know, we do all the things. Cool. And I mean, their people are like, well, I can't homeschool because I have a nine to five, you know, school doesn't have to take place during nine and five, you mm-hmm. know, or it can be, you know, you can designate and whatnot while you're not there too. So there's so many ways to make life work for you that are non-traditional. Absolutely. It's the freedom to understand that you can and then to be um to give yourself permission to do it and to try. Right. It. The worst case scenario is that it doesn't work. And then yeah. it's like, well, what else can we try? Kind of thing. Exactly. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um what advice would you give your younger self? Um, or what would you tell others who want to get started with thrifting or stocks or budgeting or maybe just, you know, debt payoff? What would you, I know you would tell them, don't get into, don't even get into right. debt, sure, but. <laughs> Find some people, like they say, like you're the culmination of like your five closest friends. Well, if you're an introvert, you know, maybe your five closest mentors or whatever it doesn't have to be real life obviously but when you're scrolling mindlessly on social media I would say switch gears was what I did as I got desperate so I started following a slew of people and implementing what they did Um, and that was basically some advice that I would give is just kind of cut back on the mindless scrolling and turn it into educational and beneficial scrolling because it'll trickle over into your thought process and then it starts to the ball rolling on change so that's great advice and I actually think I saw something recently about you know the term micro learning and you know the TikToks and the Instagrams and that really those little 30 second if if it even takes that long videos can really be a game changer right Um, and really support and you know how the algorithm works once you start watching them more and more come to you yeah yeah and it can really change your life in right ways. absolutely I love that so let's do a really quick lightning round of questions um, okay and whatever comes to mind say it don't even think about it your favorite drink iced coffee introvert or extrovert introvert all day <laughs> do that one. Night owl or early bird? That one's contingent on the day. <laughs> it could be both. Yeah. yeah. Favorite season of the year? Fall. Mm. Last TV show you binged and loved? <laughs> Hoarders. I didn't really love it, but it was comical and it was uh, entertaining. So. <laughs> ooh, that's ooh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is inspirational in its own right in so yeah. many ways <laughs> well Whitney thank you so much for being on the show I really love talking to you finally um and I appreciate your time yeah thank you I appreciate being on I love my conversation with Whitney and I hope you did too you can find Whitney on Instagram at a moonlit forest and eBay to 100K linked in the show notes. And remember, if you're a homeschooler and want to hear more about her homeschooling journey, you can get access to a bonus episode where we discuss that and more by joining Homeschool You Academy, my online school for homeschooling parents. Learn more via a link in the show notes. Thanks for listening to the Intuitive Family Podcast. 
I would love to know your thoughts about the show. So please leave a rating and review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. If you love the show, help me spread the word by sharing it with other families you know. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to the podcast and follow me on my socials linked in the show notes. See you for my next episode.